What's up guys, this is Captain Ross here, and today I'm talking about algae elimination. So, as you all know, this tank has had some troubles in the past with algae. Here and there, black beard, black hair algae, cladophora, green spot, everything in between. Absolutely some of the worst algae cases I've ever seen in any tank have been in this tank. So let's get right into how to solve it. So in the past I just kind of freaked out and I just left it alone. I mean I did water changes 50 to 75 percent every week and it did not stop anything. Then I did some research and found different ways to prevent it. And right now I am in like ground zero coming back up and trying to fix it all because I just let it get so far away from me. So in my last video, I'm not exactly sure if there's as much green spot as there was yesterday, but the entire sides of the tank you couldn't even really see into. So let's just start off right at the beginning. So first thing you're going to need if you're getting rid of algae is water changes, obviously. Even though water changes are not going to solve the problem, what they're going to do is they're going to kind of reset yourself. Each time you do a water change, it gives you an opportunity to do other things and get rid of those nitrates. So the water change is getting rid of the nitrates, but the other things you do are going to stop the algae that's already there. So water change gets rid of the nitrates and nitrites and all that. What you do gets rid of the algae that's currently there. So what do I do? I take my nice little top fin algae scraper the metal one the other ones work too this is good for like sludge on the side but at the point I'm and this bent out but this I bent it out so I could have more leverage when I'm pushing and it doesn't move now so it's really nice this one's not bent out because I don't want that type of leverage with this so sorry you're gonna be hearing some loud noises from the filters because I am doing a water change currently so what do you do? You take this handy thing right here, take it along the side of the tank, and just scrub down like that. That'll get rid of any of those little green spots. If it's not coming off, you scrub a little bit harder. This one's a little bent out. I've been using it so much, like over here. It gets rid of all those little spots. So, yeah, so it gets rid of those little spots that you don't want in your tank. And it really makes it look a lot nicer and it helps stop the, that green spot algae from coming back on the sides. Next, so you're doing a water change like this. You get down to this point and you really, like, now you're halfway through. You just got to fill it back up. What is the next step in the algae process? So what you're going to do, take out your nice little hydrogen peroxide, and you're going to get in there, and you're going to spray everything down. Filter intakes, uh, circulation pump, everything. Take it in there, squirt at the filter there. all over so you squirt that everywhere now what you gotta do since you sprayed all that you gotta wait and let it take some more water out so that you're cycling out of that what I do is I'll put in like 10% more I'll put 10% of the water back into the tank and then I'll take it back out again and then I'll start refilling. And that just ensures that that hydrogen peroxide is not going to cause any troubles on the plants and the fish. Which normally it won't, but I have had troubles with it in the past, melting back my valves. But in this tank, I'll show you some of the good side effects here. Sorry it's really loud from the filter. They're quite loud during the water changes. So right here, you see how this algae is kind of sizzling up? Can I focus it? It's kind of sizzling up, you can see the little bubbles, and it's red. 
If it's red, that means it's dying. So yesterday I did the same procedure and sprayed the crap out of all this stuff. Right there I got it too. See the red algae? That's Blackbeard that has been annihilated by the hydrogen peroxide. So what hydrogen peroxide does is it splits the chemical bond of hydrogen and oxygen. It's H2O2. So O2 is oxygen and H2O is water. So it turns into H2O and O and O automatically goes back to O2 once it touches other oxygen. Anyway, enough chemistry. So it breaks apart and that process kind of burns the algae at its core. So that stops it from being here, but sometimes it can melt back the plants as well. Just make sure you don't use too much and make sure that you are still changing the water after you do the hydrogen peroxide. I gotta put a little bit more right in here actually. I just noticed I missed that. All over. Because if you don't do that little more water change, then you're not going to be able to um, get rid of all of it and you might still have some melting, melting back with the plants. So that's hydrogen peroxide. Uh, I will be right back. I'm going to start filling the tank 10% and then I'll take it back out and then we'll keep going. Okay, so now I'm filling the tank, and during this 10% filling that I do, I don't add prime, but that's just for the 10%. And then as soon as I take 10% back out, then I will, and I am start filling it like for real, then I will immediately add the prime at the beginning, because that way the fish aren't going to get that chlorine burn. And trust me, this works. So what else can you do for algae? regular wall cleanings so that's what this thing's for right here so I've done the hard scraping I've done it uh, H2O2 now it's time for the regular cleaning of the tank so just a regular thing when I'm doing a water change come down in here just kind of scrub out all throughout here all throughout the tank and this will just ensure that no little spores are going. If you have a little magnetic cleaner go ahead and use that but I don't suggest it because they can easily scratch the tank. I've tried all kinds but I have never had a lot of luck with them in the past. Toss it into a bucket and then always adjust your aquascape. I try to change my aquascape up a little bit suck out different things here and there so yeah another thing I do with my rocks and stuff I'll flip them over so if I notice a lot of spores growing on one side of a rock I'll go ahead and flip it over and that helps deal with the algae as well so now I've added in not quite 10% but just about so I'm gonna go ahead and start sucking again So now we're sucking and now we're going to talk about other maintenance that can also help with algae use. Um, make sure you're cleaning out your filters. If you leave the same filter on again and again, it's got that, that media in there, mechanical and biological and all that. Biological you want to have that bacteria on, but mechanical and stuff like sponges and, or filter floss, it's going to get to that point where it's got so much crap on it. That's just going to be putting it back in the tank with the flow. So you're going to want to make sure that you are cleaning it out. So once I do it every couple months, I know you should do it more than that, like once a month. But for the bigger ones, I do like once every couple months. I'll take it outside, hose it all down, every little bit. I'll switch out some of the uh, media. Um, I try not to use... Um, too much carbon. I try to stay more on the biological side and mechanical such as filter floss instead of the carbon. I heard that other stuff like chemi 
pure blue and all this other stuff was really helpful as well. I mainly stick with the biological media, not the uh, carbon, just because I don't really want to change it out all the time. So yeah, that's the basics for the filters. Next, flow. So as you can see, I got this little thing up here. I hope to be getting like a maxi jet soon, but this thing is really great. It blows around the whole tank and makes sure that little debris and stuff doesn't sit on the ground. You, you'd notice right here, I have a lot of debris sitting on the ground. That is not normal for this tank. The only reason you're seeing that is because this thing is not currently on. Once I turn this thing on and the water's up, we are not going to see that debris anymore. I'll be right back. I'm going to turn that water back on and start it up. Now I've got the water going right back in the tank. I'm going to immediately add in the prime. I add in a little extra of a dosage so that it compensates for that water we pulled out and put back in and pulled out and put back in. So we put a nice dosage in there. A little bit over the 50% that we normally do. And prime is great, guys. Very, uh, good conditioner. The last thing I would suggest to you, you got the water changes, you cleaned out the sides of the tank, you've um, wiped it down to ensure that stuff isn't growing, the spores, and you've cleaned out the filters and you got that flow going from the filters or a pump or something, get yourself some snails in a pleco. Um, Siamese algae eaters are great for um, the black beard algae, but there's other stuff that's really good. So that side algae pluckers are really nice for. I suggest getting a couple smaller ones opposed to a big one because big ones get a little more tired and they'll sit around more. Depending on the pleco, some people have big ones that are that'll chow down, but in my experience they stay a little bit more dormant than the little ones. But they won't get the hair algae as much as like a flying fox as some people will say, or a Siamese algae eater. Different people say different things. I've had more luck with a Siamese algae eater myself on the Blackbeard. But at the same time, it's kind of a sensitive fish and it can die easily if things aren't right. Autosynclus are nice, but they're not for bigger tanks. In my opinion, they're for tinier tanks where you can't put a pleco. I'd put a pleco in if you can. So yeah, that just about wraps it up. Oh yeah, snails. Uh, Trapdoors are probably not the best snail for an aquarium. I have luck with them. Other people don't. But I've got a trap door in here. He's pretty sweet. I made sure mine doesn't have in bat any virus or anything. He's okay. And he does very well in here. He gives birth sometimes. And they'll come out clean and they'll disappear. I don't know where they are. And then <clears throat> ram's horns and uh, trumpet snails are my favorite. Trumpets will go down underneath and clean everything out. And ram's horns will scrub off the sides and get on your plants and stuff. So that's enough for me. This has been a long video. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Stay tuned for reviews. I have this. Um, I have a lot of reviews coming out for Cobalt Aquatics. I'm, a lot of you guys know them. Some a lot of you don't know them. They're a great aquarium store that supplies mainly to smaller supplies only smaller places so your local fish stores my broadway aquatics your picasso's exotic aquatics different places gerbers all these little places or bigger privately owned places aquarium 33 could have had it when they were open but they don't supply like pet smart and pet code they're more they want to help the small places because you know that's where we really love to get our stuff you cannot beat your local fish store trust me no Petco, PetSmart, Pet Supplies Plus is going to beat your local fish store unless it's just really terrible. <clears throat> There's no way, and as far as I've seen. These guys supply them with great food, great equipment, and I'll be doing some reviews on them in the future. Stay tuned, guys. I'm trying to get a video out every week now. 
Uh, trying, not going to try and do that every other day because then I run out of ideas and then I go dormant forever. So once a week videos, filters kicking back in. That's my cue. I'll see you guys later. Thank you so much for watching. Captain Ross out.